What if I were to tell you that before the game even arrives, Tears of the Kingdom is already going to be the best open world game in the world? Now, that might seem like a pretty biased statement, and admittedly, I'm a Nintendo YouTuber. I'm not like a certain RGT85. Uh, I am a Nintendo YouTuber. That being said, I have my biases, right? I love Zelda. But I've also been playing video games for 30 plus years. And in those 30 plus years, I've experienced a lot. I've played on Xbox and PlayStation, PC. I played a lot of open world games, notably. And I can say with confidence that I feel like this is a admittedly biased take, but also one that has a lot of logical backing. Now, before I dive further, I want to give credit to Player Essence for sparking this thoughts in my head. Uh, by doing a similar video a couple days ago. I'll put a link to that at the top of the description down below. You guys should absolutely go check out his thoughts because he's also someone who's been gaming for, you know, three plus decades. Uh, and it has even more experience with PlayStation open world uh, games in particular. That being said, uh, before I tell you why Tears of the Kingdom is going to be the best open world game ever released, I want to remind you that we are getting really close to 100,000 subscribers. And when we get there, or if we get there, because I don't want to presume anything, we will give away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. We'll also give away a Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED, you know, that special version. And we'll throw in a pin from PAX East. We're also working with a few companies to try to increase the amount of giveaways we have so we could truly celebrate 100,000 subscribers in only the way Nintendo Prime can. Now... That being said, let's get into why I think Tears of the Kingdom is going to end up being the best open world game. And we first have to start with what Breath of the Wild had going for it that Tears of the Kingdom is just adding to. And I have said many times in the past, over the last six years, and there's a lot of our longtime viewers can attest to this, that Tears of the Kingdom or in this case, Breath of the Wild, has ruined open world games for me. And it ruined open world games for me because of the way the physics and the world itself works, right? So many things are interactive. The bushes react to you. The grass reacts to you. You can cut down trees. There's hot and cold and wet surfaces. And all of this stuff impacts what you could do with the characters. Snow slows down your ability to walk. So does sand, unless you get special gear that can help you. Uh, climbing can be a little bit slower on some surfaces, a little bit quicker on others. And just, just the, the world itself and the way Nintendo built up Breath of the Wild, it was absolutely incredible. And it's just really unfortunate that so many other open world games from other AAA developers don't have this level of interactivity, which makes the world feel believable. That's one of the big things I loved about Breath of the Wild is that the world feels like our own. It's a world that we could live in. We deal with the heat. We deal with rain. We deal with cold. We deal with grass and trees and other things. And when we run into them, not only do we run into them, we could knock them down. Lightning can light things on fire. This is just a level of interactivity and a level of physics that simply just doesn't exist in other open world games. And I don't really know why. I, I brought this up before in a debate uh, comparing to Horizon and then Horizon Forbidden West. And usually the the counter argument is that, you know, during certain sneak sections and certain areas, the uh, foliage does move when Ally moves through it. And this is true, but it, that's a very targeted gameplay situation. It's like Assassin's Creed when you can hide in the grass. Yeah, that, that little grass has a little interactivity with you. But imagine that you don't have to have just special sections and that's just how the whole world works. When you run in the bushes, when you run in the grass... It reacts to you when you shoot a fire arrow at it. It lights on fire. Like, it's it's something that, I, that Breath of the Wild just did brilliantly. And I have to set that up because Tears of the Kingdom is doing that as well. But see, Tears of the Kingdom isn't just adding that level of interactivity, of course, or maintaining it. They're adding to it. 
We have this these layers to the world, right? We have caves. We have potentially underwater. We don't know yet. We obviously have some underground segments because we know the world is cracked open. We, uh, we have a bunch of sky islands, and everything is just seamlessly built together. And so now we have the physics engine built in. We're not only are we just talking about what we, what we could do when we're on the ground, what happens in the sky, the physics of spreading our arms to slow down, bringing our body in so we could dive quicker. That's realistic. The sound of the wind whooshing by us, that again adds that air of just believability of what is happening in the moment. And while we do have to suspend our belief a little bit, because from the heights that Link is falling from, just diving into a shallow river would kill you. Uh, look, it's a video game. There's going to be some video gameness to it. So we're not talking about how this is some perfect combination of realism, but it's just a, a much more surreal experience than in other open world games. And again, this isn't me saying that Tears of the Kingdom is going to be the best game ever made or that there aren't other open world games that are overall better. We're just talking about how Tears of the Kingdom is working in terms of its world. And we can't talk about that without also talking about the abilities, right? We, we talked about the physics engine from Breath of the Wild coming back, and we, we, we talked about the layers being added to this world and how it's really massive. But what about the actual new abilities, right? The things that they're addressing from Breath of the Wild that just make things better. Durability is one of the number one complaints from Breath of the Wild and, and how the durability functions in the world. And imagine that while they still have that same durability system, they have added things to it. That fuse ability fundamentally changes the way the durability system works. An item's about to break and you can just use it, or you could just use things right away and add durability, add attack power, add defense, change the type of weapon it is. You could take a basic stick and turn it into a hammer. You could do a lot of really cool things, and we're only scratching the surface of what they showed us. There's a lot we could even imagine doing, and we can fuse it with the shield or with a weapon, which is really cool. So either hand that we hold something in, fusion is a possibility, and this greatly impacts uh, the how the world's going to play together, right? Like being able to make our own axes, not just having to find one, being able to get our own hammers to, to, to farm minerals and stuff. Like this is all world interactivity that's just gorgeous. And that's before we get to the ultra hand ability, which a lot of people are only imagining the, the, the possibilities of this, being able to build custom, uh, you know, vehicles and all this that just interact with the world in real time and that is just such a cool thing that we don't see we've seen like nuts and bolts but that wasn't an open world experience it didn't have this level of interactivity so this is just a, a different level we've, we've seen vehicles in other open world games but they're all preset vehicles and preset things it's not something open to literally the the the, the player's imagination like this is and it's just going to work it's so brilliant. And, and then you have the Ascend and Recall, being able to send inanimate objects back in time based on where they originally moved from is, is, is just going to be incredibly manipulative of this world. And then obviously being able to just literally swim through surfaces, go to the top of caves, go to the top of mountains instantly, and then dealing with whatever's up there. Like you might go through a mountain and all of a sudden it's super hot at the top. Maybe you found a hot spring. Maybe you found a desert area. Or you know what? Maybe you pop up and you're in the snow, and you got to be prepared for that. You you see like Link reacting in real time to all these different environments and needing to get different clothing and, and deal with the reality of this world. Look, it's Breath of the Wild, but bigger, better, with new abilities. It's impossible for this not to simply be one of the best open world games if not the best open world game there is now again that doesn't mean tears of the kingdom is going to be the best overall game because there's much more to a video game than just how the world works but that was such a fundamental thing in breath of the wild that tears of the kingdom is expanding upon i don't really know how other open world games can compete they have thousand person teams sometimes and they don't even think about how the world interacts they just place grass they don't, like you could take a screenshot from Forbidden West and compare it to a screenshot from Tears of the Kingdom and 10 out of 10 people are going to look at Forbidden West and tell you, man, that looks like a gorgeous game. That looks like one of the best games ever. It is so gorgeous looking. But then when you fundamentally play the games, that gameplay experience is so different because the world doesn't really react to you. 
for all you, you know, you just eliminate all that foliage, eliminate those trees. You're basically just running on a flat surface that doesn't matter, even with the foliage and trees there. Whereas in Tears of the Kingdom, all of that stuff makes a difference. The type of landscape makes a difference. So, look, I'm really excited for Tears of the Kingdom. I think this is something that's going massively under-talked about. Again, full credit to Player Essence for originally broaching this topic. And I've been talking about this stuff for years when it comes to Breath of the Wild, and now it's just going to apply to Tears of the Kingdom and then some in a much bigger, more expansive world. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in that next video. Yeah.